Hey, it's on. <laughs> Look. Well, it's about that time. We'll go and get started. It's good to see you tonight. Trust you've had a, a good day. We're thankful for the rain. And uh, I know y'all got rain. I sat out in my car last night for 20 minutes before I could get out and get in the house. And then when I did get out, I stepped in about, I don't know, it come up to my ankles in water. I stepped in the poodle. But it was so it's good rain, though. If you would, for a moment, look on the back of your program. It's got some things we just want you to be aware of and highlight. I've asked you to do this before, but I encourage you to take the program home with you. It does two things. Mike don't have to pick it up, and it reminds you of what's going on in the coming weeks. So let me ask you to do that. The first thing, if you want to be a part of the children ministry, uh, meeting is going to be at 6 o'clock on uh Thursday, is that correct? Yeah, tomorrow, yeah. It's going to be in the senior room. You bring your own finger food and drink <laughs> or eat at home. And uh, <laughs> that's going to be a very important meeting. I won't make light of it. Please, if you want to be a part of, of that ministry, please. And, of course, you see we're baptism service be on the 22nd. We've got, some, uh, we've got several going to be baptized. That's going to be a glorious morning. So let me encourage you to be a part of that. Of course, the night of the 22nd, the hearts will be here. And uh, let me make sure I get this right. It's a baby dollar tree shower. Is that right? Money tree. Money tree shower. It's a money tree shower. Bring more than dollars. Bring, bring your money tree with you. I think that's what I read. So anyway. They are expecting, and I think we're just going to give money. They could probably get more with it over where they at. And, of course, church council meeting. Uh, of course, our quarter business meeting will be on the 15th. Uh, that's always the highlight of our night. <laughs> Last about 10, 15 minutes or maybe less. And then church council meeting on the 29th. Once you know who you are with that. So if you would uh, remind yourself of that. Of course, it's Sunday regular worship services and encourage you to to be here for that I'm always looking for signs I saw two this week one's a church sign and I like this sign I think it only had three words I value Wednesdays think about it I value Wednesdays that means Wednesdays is important to the one to put that sign up. And the North's important to us because it's just a time, the middle of the week coming. I know if you've had a day like Donna, you're ready for the night, aren't you, Donna? Are you ready for the night, Donna? Uh, <laughs> uh, she, she has sometimes a very uh, frustrating job and it does a great job, but it's uh, I had some patients today, and I just visit. And they sort of got me frustrated. I don't know, but um, let's value let's value this night, okay? It's very meaningful, actually. Come together as a fellowship. Mother sign undoubtedly. This sign was on the back of a car. It says, "Don't let the car fool you. My treasures are laid up in heaven." Well, that was pretty good when I first read it, but it was on the back of a Mazda convertible sports car at about $40,000. So I don't know what that meant about that person that owned that car. They must not have known that. Any um, anniversaries among us tonight? That's a good crowd. Well, we 
we wait a few more minutes, we're going to fill this place up. This is awesome. Is there any words of recognition? Uh, anybody you know accomplished something this week that we need to be aware of? And this, God is doing some special things in the life of our church. Miss Wanda. Two of your children got a dream job. <laughs> do what? What'd you do? I said, no, it wasn't me. Oh, who was Another it? Two Which one? Well, Jerry got back into the newspaper business. Amen. And Liz was hired to leave. Wow. Did y'all hear that? Dear, uh, Eric got back in the newspaper business. Miss Lisa's Blue Cross Blue Shield in Birmingham. That's awesome. That's good news. I know Eric's tickled to death, isn't he? And I know you are too. Anyone else? Roy, just let everybody know last night we hired Mr. Croper as the new principal at Southern Valley High School. And uh, he was the assistant principal, so he will be taking over and will be in the process of hiring an assistant principal. But I have invited him to church. Okay. Okay, and I'm not surprised you invited him to church. That's, that's a good thing. <laughs> Make the right decision. Okay. Well, if we didn't, I didn't vote. You're going to sit on neutral ground. There you go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Anyone else? This is good. This is good. Our young people are on the way or at the nursing home. Good night. How many did? About 30 of them. About 30 of our kids went to nursing home tonight. So you pray for the nursing home. <laughs> boot, boot camp. That's, how many? Amen. That's great. That's great. That is so good. Yes. Let's just all to wear overalls Sunday. That'll be okay with me. I don't have any. I don't wear overalls. I don't want anybody to get the impression that I've ever worked for a living. That's the reason. I, I, so I'm not going to wear those things. Anyway, I'm enjoying my time at the hospital, though every day I'm, I'm a, people think I'm a doctor. Yeah, they put the phone down. I got to go now. The doctor's coming in. I, lo I love it. And I don't tell them no different. I just, I just sort of let them, you know. Um, about a month ago, I went to pray with one. I says, could I have pray with you? She said, well, doctor, what am I going to do to surgery? I said, well, well, we'll talk about that after we pray. But, uh, Wallace, thank you for your ministry. Thank you so much for what you and the guys do. And I know it's going to mean a lot to this family. And, and so it's going to mean a lot to us when we see them come to church. By the way, that's what church is all about. That's what it's about. Well, we're going to our local prayer concerns. We've got a... 
we got several, and uh, I'll mention just a couple, and please help me. Um, some of you may know and may not know Billy Harris, uh, the, the pastor over at uh, Pleasant Valley Church, has been out for a couple of weeks. He's, he's very ill and is uh, going to be out for the next couple of, on, through July, we know. Uh, don't know a lot about that. We just know he's not, he's, he's not feeling well. James Cohorn has been filling into the end revival uh, this week. I went over Monday night, just had a great time over there. So let's be much in prayer for them. They probably, well, they start at 7. They should be up by 9 o'clock. And that's uh, <laughs> what time we got out of the night. But let's be much in prayer uh, for, for this church and for, for Billy Harris, a good friend to Williams, by the way. He's a good friend to Williams, so we'll be praying for him. Um, any update on Misty? Anyone have an update on Miss Misty? Still in intensive Okay, still in intensive care. Okay, okay. Slowly, okay. Any update on Tanner? Okay. What do we have to do? What do we do for Facebook? Does anybody know? We just didn't know it, did we? <laughs> we just didn't know it. That's true. Um, I need some help. Some others. I know there's more. So please help me out. Denola, how's how's brother doing? About the same. We're going to continue to pray for him. Anyone else, please? This Joyce Cannell is seemingly is getting a little better, although she is very, very limited to what she can do and can't do. So. Just continue me much in prayer for them, okay? Anyone else? Let's continue to pray for Frank. I was at the hospital the day he came in. I didn't get to see him. I saw his son and couldn't make contact with him, but he was at the revival Monday night in Pendleton store, so, but he does go in for some tests. There'd be much in prayer for him. He will need it because he's, this is uh, pretty serious stuff. Anyone else? Of course, good to see Heather and Chris, which don't surprise me. I'm going to continue to pray for you guys, lift you up, and encourage you and so on. Um, God bless y'all. God bless y'all. I think that's rain again. Thank you for the rain. Amen. Amen. I've got one of these problems. I, I pray for rain. I left my umbrella at home. <laughs> Must be. Talk about that mustard seed the other morning. I need that mustard seed, don't I? Huh? Okay. Uh, let's look at our opportunities for the week for our uh, everything that's going on. Just look on there and and see what's there for you. Sunday school and church at night. Oh, by the way, most of you do. But if you're missing Sunday night, you're missing a blessing. Bob is doing Bible Bible study in First John, and it is really good. And we're gonna make it through that thing. Only got four chapters, and we're on the second chapter, I believe. So we're getting interrupted, and but please come, please come, okay? It's a, uh, it's a good thing. So, 
Before we got our missionaries and all these folks that we pray for and support. So let me encourage you to continue to pray for these people and support them any way that you uh, know how and can. Of course, our homebound is Hazel, just had a birthday this week. Obi, Miss Evelyn, Brother Sidney, Joan Herring, Bill Stacy, which last report I met, I saw her at the hospital a couple of weeks ago. Things is just not going on that well for her at that time and him. Miss Wolf, caught her on the phone the other night, seemed to be doing pretty good. And Miss Fred, Mr. Freddie, he'll probably be seeing a bunch of folks tonight from Williams. So this is our, our prayer concerns. Brother Bobby, if you would, if you'll uh, word our prayer for us tonight, for these concerns, appreciate it. We are grateful, O oh Lord, to be able to come into your presence and know that you hear us and that you answer prayer. We thank you for this time together. We thank you for the fellowship. We thank you for the sense of the presence of your Holy Spirit. Lord, you have heard all of these <coughs> joys, and we thank you for them. You have heard the concerns, and, O oh Lord, we know that you hear them, and we lay them at your feet, believing that you have the answer to all of our concerns. We pray for our mission endeavor, wherever it may be around this world, that people may be reached for Christ, and that people who are already Christian may be strengthened, we pray for this church, Lord, that you will be guiding her as she <coughs> seeks for a pastor and as she seeks to continue to walk in your will. We pray that we will be a beacon light to this community. And we pray, O oh Lord, that you will lead us and bless us on the Lord's day for a great worship of your holy name. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I know, I know you do, but I just refresh our memory. Uh, continue to lift up Brother Oliver Graves. Oliver is, uh, you know, he tries to be here all he can. He will be here tonight, I'm sure. But let's continue to pray for him. He's uh, just get a little slower, and but uh, he's uh, Oliver's a good man, and he loves Jesus and he loves this church so much. So, if you get a chance to call him, go by and check on him, see if he's okay. Thank you for what you do for him. Well, we're going to be blessed again tonight. One of our young ladies is going to come and bring our devotion tonight. Miss Allison, God bless you and your ministry. We appreciate you. Well, what a your joy to our church. And I know your family is proud of you. And uh, looking forward to tonight. So you just come on. And you just close as you see fit, okay? Good evening. Just give me a minute to gather myself. I was thinking on the way over here, I should have made a title for my devotional, but my mind was in an overdrive, so I, I didn't. So I'll just have to get started on it without introducing it in any way. Um, I want to read you a story. It's just a little short story. It, it kind of makes a point about um, something that I want to say. And uh, Bob gave me this many, many years ago. I don't know how long I've had it, but I'll read it and I'll stick it in a drawer and then a year or two later I'll find it and then I'll stick it in a book. And I've been finding it for years <laughs> and I found it the other day and I thought it sort of went along with what I wanted to say tonight. So I'm gonna read this to you and then I'll um, talk a little more about what I wanted to say. And the title of it is The Stranger. I don't know if you remember it. A few months before I was born, my dad met a stranger who was new to our small Tennessee town. From the beginning, Dad was fascinated with this enchanting newcomer and soon invited him to live with our family. The stranger was quickly accepted and was round to welcome me into the world a few months later. As I grew up, I never questioned his place in our family. Mom taught, um, getting lost. Mom taught me to love the word of God. Dad taught me to obey it. But the stranger was our storyteller. He could weave the most fascinating tales. Adventures, mysteries, and comedies were daily conversations. He could hold our whole family spellbound for hours each evening. He was like a friend to the whole family. He took Dad, Bill, and me to our first major league game. He was always encouraging us to see the movies, and he even made arrangements to introduce us to several movie stars. The stranger was an incessant talker. 
Dad didn't seem to mind, but sometimes Mom would quietly get up while the rest of us were enthralled by one of his stories of faraway places and go to her room and read her Bible and pray. I wondered if she ever prayed that the stranger would leave. You see, my dad ruled our household with certain moral convictions, but this stranger never felt an obligation to honor them. Profanity, for example, was not allowed in our house, not from us, from our friends or adults. Our longtime visitor, however, used occasional four-letter words that burned my ears and made Dad squirm. To my knowledge, the stranger was never confronted. My dad was a teetotaler who didn't permit alcohol in his home, not even for cooking. But the stranger felt he needed exposure and enlightened us to other ways of life. He offered us beer and other alcoholic beverages. He made cigarettes look tasty and cigars manly and pipes distinguished. He talked too freely about sex. His comments were sometimes blatant, <clears throat> sometimes suggestive, and generally embarrassing. I know now that my early concepts of the man-woman relationship were influenced by the stranger. As I look back, I believe it was the grace of God that the stranger did not influence us more. Time after time, he opposed the values of my parents, yet he was seldom rebuked and never asked to leave. More than 30 years have passed since the stranger moved in with a young family on Morningside Drive, but if I were to walk into my parents' den today, you would still see him sitting over in a corner waiting for someone to listen to him talk and watch him draw his pictures. His name, we always called him TV. Since this was written, I think you can pretty safely say <laughs> that TV has exponentially gotten a lot worse because I, that was probably 20 years ago at least that you wrote that and things have really gone downhill since, since that was written. And uh, although television is not really the topic that I wanted to talk about, it just really, it really fits, uh, it's a fitting way to, de to describe it. Um, probably everybody here has had a callus at some time. You know what a callus is, you know, it's really hard and you can't feel anything through it, but before you get that callus, it starts out as just normal skin. Like if it's on your hand or your foot or whatever, say it's on your foot and you have a shoe that doesn't fit. and um, the nerve endings are right there on that nice, soft, sensitive skin. Well, it rubs it, and it's excruciating. It really hurts. And at first, you draw back from it because you, you can't bear that uncomfortable feeling. Well, after a while, if you keep putting your foot in that shoe, pretty soon you get a callus. And um, at some point, um, you know, maybe, maybe you wince a little when it's rubbed because you've gotten a little more used to it. It's not quite as bad as it was. And finally, the callus will get so thick that, you know, you could even stick a, something sharp in the, in the skin and you wouldn't even feel it because it's gotten so thick. And um, how often does that happen to us with the values that we hold? Gradually over time, you know, our world changes and values change. And um, we're constantly assaulted by um, pressure to compromise the values that we have. And um, sometimes not even by our own doing. Maybe it's just because you're in the world and that's the way everything is. And um, you get assaulted by these pressures to compromise. Well, pretty soon you get used to seeing them and um, it's like you don't even notice anymore. It becomes the new accepted norm. You know, if, if the change were really acute, like if it happened all of a sudden, you would resist but it's so gradual. Say like um, something that changes quickly. Say like in 1965, we were watching Andy Griffith. And you know, it's a show about a father and his son and it's very clean and you know, if, if, if there were a, a husband and wife, they were probably in twin beds. There was no profanity and, and the moral right always won in the end. Well, you know, if in 1965 we'd watched Andy Griffith and then suddenly two and a half men came on, the world would be outraged. I mean, the, there would be such a, a cry out because of this horrific thing, but it took 30 or 40 years to reach that level of vulgarity. It, it took a long time for us to finally get used to it. And so, um, what, what do we do about this? How do we keep this from happening? Um, we have to stay alert. 
We, we have to uh, keep our mind on godly values. You know, if, we, um, if you feel uncomfortable around something, usually that's a sign that you're supposed to be on the alert and take note. If, if you feel alert about something, that something's bothering you, then maybe that's not quite right. Maybe that means you're supposed to take notice and not just let it go by this time. If, um, if we expose our self to ungodly things, we eventually just get used to them and become comfortable. But on the other hand, if we consistently expose ourselves to the things of God, then the ungodly will make us very uncomfortable. And um, the way that we do that is we have to be firmly grounded in God's word. And um, that's the only way that we can really know what God's values are. And when we know those values, we need to take a stand for them. We need to take a stand in our world so that people will know what our values are. And I think many times if we do that, we will find that there are others who are like us who want to stand for that value. And if you stand up for that value, then somebody else will say, well, hey, I feel that way too. Just didn't have the courage to stand up and say it. And that made me think about, you know, in Daniel uh, chapter 1, verse 8, here's a young man who stood for his values. Daniel resolved not to defile himself with the royal food and wine and asked the chief official for permission not to defile himself in this way. This was a teenage boy, just a kid, facing a king and a, a nation of soldiers who had taken him. Um, you know, it'd be easy to see why he would let this little dietary thing just slip on by and think that that's not that important. But he didn't do that. He resolved not to defile himself. And, you know, resolve is a really strong word. When you think about it, it means to be devoted to a principle and committed to a course of action. You know, I know now that I must be resolved to do what I know is right and to stand for godly values. And I hope that everyone here will resolve to do that with me. Let's pray. Lord, we just thank you for the standards that you have set for us, standards that keep us safe and healthy and in a good relationship with you. And we thank you for your Holy Spirit that convicts us when we veer from your ways. Lord, just help us to be sensitive to the guiding power of your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen.